tonight why Britain is fat and getting fatter. I can go to a salad bar and I can pay three quid for a salad. Whereas for that, I could have had three chicken burgers. And what fast food does to you in just one day. If she continued with this diet that she started today, she would unfortunately end up with a high risk category for heart disease, strokes and diabetes. Good evening and welcome to The Tonight programme. Despite government warnings that we should all eat healthily and take regular exercise, Britain is getting fatter, with nearly a quarter of all adults now classified as being clinically obese. Last year, the number of people admitted to hospital with health problems caused by being overweight increased by almost a third. Tonight, as experts warn that the NHS is struggling to cope, Fiona Foster asks whether we're doing enough to stop the obesity time bomb. We love eating. We're consuming more burgers, pizza, fried chicken, chips, cakes, crisps and chocolate than ever before. Last year, we spent a record five and a half billion pounds on takeaways. So it's little wonder we're fat and getting fatter. Our nation's diet is really, really poor at the moment. It's too easy to go to convenience foods, high salt, high fat, and we need to make sure that the, really that everyone understands what effect this is having on the nation. It's a ticking time bomb in terms of cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, strokes, and unfortunately, it's going to lead to a really, really poor and ill population. This is Charlotte. She's 17 years old and weighs 18 stone. She's clinically obese and it's already taking its toll on her health. I only have to walk up the road and I'm out of breath. I only have to walk downstairs, I'm out of breath. I can't really, I can't walk far distances. Because otherwise I'll have to sit down halfway through and then carry on. And I just get out of breath way too quickly and I just can't do things that I want to do. Charlotte is about to become the third member of her family to undergo weight loss surgery. Just thank, just now, be glad to see her back. Yeah. Her mum had the same operation in 2009, and her sister hit the headlines when, at the age of 14, she became the youngest person in Britain to have a gastric band fitted. And now it's Charlotte's turn. A 17 year old girl undergoing major surgery so that she can live a normal life. Latest NHS figures show the number of weight loss operations like this one increased by 70% in just 12 months. This, say the experts, is the shocking reality of our growing obesity crisis. The problem is definitely an epidemic. Uh, it's been building up for the last 30 to 40 years. We are now at a point where the ticking time bomb has already exploded. Britain is now the fattest country in Europe, but we weren't always this way. 50 years ago, in 1962, the average man weighed just 10 stone. And the average woman, 9 stone. Today, it's 13 stone for a man, and 11 stone for a woman. But if we carry on as we are, in 50 years' time, the average woman will weigh 13 stone. And the average man, incredibly, 17 stone. By then, 60%, close to two-thirds of us, will be clinically obese. So why are we getting fatter? Well, nowadays, we're spending more time in front of computers, watching television, playing video games, we're relying on our cars more, and we're exercising less. 
But it's not just about lifestyle. It's also about what we eat and how often we're eating it. It's just the simple availability. Whereas food was a special occasion, eaten at home, now food is ubiquitous everywhere. A station platform where we're told that there's a meal deal, but this meal deal contains a bottle of fizzy drink, a sandwich, and a packet of crisps. So the new meal has no vegetables, it's, it's high fat products, high salt products, and the constant snacking, grazing if you like, becomes the new normal. We first met Charlotte just a few days before her gastric band surgery. She told us then that eating the wrong sort of food is just too easy. Temptation is definitely everywhere. It doesn't matter where you go, there's going to be some restaurant or some fast food restaurant. And then you go in, before you know it, you've got three burgers down you. And you don't even realise. I can go to a salad bar and I can pay three quid for a salad. Whereas for that I could have had three chicken burgers. My biggest downfall is definitely energy drinks. I can get through about five, probably sometimes even more than that, throughout my shift at work. And they're only 35p, so it's cheap. It's cheaper than water, water is 60p. So at 35p, it's cheaper. I just can't help myself, you're eating the food. We've lost a lot of the lessons which we used to have in the past, which is eat well, exercise well, and burn all the excess energy off. What we're doing now is basing our meals very much on processed food, which is full of ingredients which predispose towards fatness. And worst of all, we're not exercising. We're becoming a nation of couch potatoes. That's all very nice, but it does have a terrible effect on health. According to a specially commissioned tonight's survey of 2,000 adults, three quarters said they didn't take regular exercise and a third of those questioned described their diet as unhealthy. One in ten admitted they had a fast food meal more than six times a week. So, what sort of impact does a modern fast food diet have on our health? Hi, I'm Tammy Facey. Hi, I'm Terry Facey. And, and we're, we're identical, identical twins. twins. Tammy and Terry have agreed to help us find out. Normally, they're both careful about what they eat. But for one day only, that's all going to change. One of them's going to go away and have all the horrible foods, all the really fatty, fatty types of foods that they can have. And we're going to take their cholesterol in the morning and in the evening. The other one is going to go away and have a really, really good, healthy diet. And again, we're going to see what effect that has on the cholesterol from the morning and the afternoon. And it's not just their cholesterol. We'll also monitor their blood pressure and check their arteries. At the start of the day, tests show they're as identical on the inside as they are on the outside. But will that change? Tammy's on a healthy diet of low-fat, low-calorie food. Terry, on the other hand, is on the great British diet of ready meals, takeaways and sugary, salty snacks. First up, breakfast. So right now I've got um, a bowl of healthy cereal, some semi-skim milk, a bowl of fruit and some green tea. I've got a sausage and bacon sandwich on white bread and brown sauce and a cup of tea. Lunchtime, and they're both having a curry, but with some big differences. Tammy, on the healthy diet, is having a freshly prepared meal. So I've come out for lunch, I've decided to treat myself, and, and I've got a cauliflower and chickpea curry with brown rice and some water, and it's really yummy. Terry, on the unhealthy diet, is having a ready meal straight out of the microwave. I'm having from alu sag, chicken korma and white rice, and chicken samosas. Papadum, a fizzy drink, and mango chutney. Time for their final meal of the day, and it's a fish supper. Tammy has cooked her own dinner, while Terry is treating herself to fish and chips. So it's dinner time, and I'm going to have a healthy pan fried salmon with boiled kale and a glass of water. And I'm having the unhealthy option. I've been to the chippy, I've got fish and chips, a fizzy drink, and I'm going to add loads of ketchup. So today, Tammy on the healthy diet has stayed well within recommended guidelines for calories and fat content. But Terry hasn't been quite so good. Her meals were bigger and contained a total of 90 grams of fat, 
20 grams too much according to government guidelines. And she's consumed more than 4,000 calories, double the recommended intake. But after just one day, will the twins' contrasting diets really make a difference to their health? Time to find out. First, Tammy, who's been on the strictly healthy diet. Straight away, you can see how much nicer your arteries are beating away. That's a brilliant carotid artery, really. That's as good as it gets. Well Tammy's fit and well. But what about Terry, the unhealthy twin? Her pulse rate has risen because her body is working harder to digest the food. And her arteries have narrowed because of the amount of salt she's consumed. When we did the ultrasound test, it was really interesting to see that the blood volume that was going into Terry's neck was actually reduced compared to her sister's. So do you see the small, the small vein on top? That's the vein that's, that's feeding into the brain. And already that looks quite constricted. You can see the difference between the two. Also, her cholesterol level, her fat level, has also gone up directly, purely from diet. If she continued with this diet that she started today, if she continued with fast food, junk food, convenience food, she would unfortunately end up with a high risk category for heart disease, strokes and diabetes. Terry is going back to her normal diet with no lasting damage done. But for the many who eat like this on a daily basis, the prognosis isn't so good. I don't think it's uh, overstating it to say that there are some people who because of their eating behaviours are going to shorten their lives. I see patients every day who in effect are doing that. The NHS spent £4.2 billion last year treating overweight patients. But if obesity continues to rise at its current rate, that figure will double by the year 2050. Britain, say the experts, is in danger of sleepwalking into a crisis it can't afford. I think the uh, economic implications for the health service are onerous. We are going to see large numbers of people uh, entering middle age with serious diseases, which are obesity-related diseases, which will take up a huge amount of NHS resource in medication and also in surgery. Uh, and this could have really profound cost implications for the NHS in the longer term. Birmingham is officially Britain's fattest city, and the burden on hospitals here is already considerable. Last year, more than £170 million of the city's NHS budget was targeted at tackling obesity. So I'm just going to do your height, weight, and then work out your BMI. Okay. Here at Birmingham's Heartlands Hospital, they have a special obesity clinic, fitted out with oversized chairs and specially reinforced beds and wheelchairs. Five years ago, the clinic was open for one session a week. Now it has more than one a day. OK, oh, you're quite tall. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> stand up straight, that's fine. Being in the clinic today, it struck me that we could have been in Birmingham, Alabama, rather than Birmingham in the West Midlands. Are we catching up with America? No, we've caught up with them already. There are certain areas of the UK that have got similar levels of obesity to America. In the future, with the obesity problem, the NHS is going to be in incredible trouble and is going to be crippled by looking after the patient with obesity, all the complications, the medication costs. So unless we tackle the obesity problem now, we're going to end up in serious problems. This is one of Dr. Tahiri's biggest patients. Pargat Chand weighs 40 stone. He works in the rag trade and supplies clothes for overweight men. Not surprisingly, business is booming. That one's uh, the biggest jacket you do. That would be around about a 58. That's about that's a 7XL. On the shirts, we take it right the way up to a, uh, a 7. Rising obesity rates may be good for business, but Pargat's worried about the effect his own weight is having on his health. I don't stand for too long in the shop. My knees hurt. I've got pains in both shoulders. Because of, the, because of the weight, my arms drape down, so I've got pains in my shoulders. I'm asthmatic, I'm diabetic, so these are the risks. I don't want to end up being 
in a box and you know at the age of uh, 40 45 so really I do want to sort of do something about it in three weeks time Pargat's having a gastric band fitted to reduce the size of his stomach and restrict the amount of food he can eat where are you in your your treatment as it were I'm um, just waiting for surgery. Uh, I've got surgery coming up uh, March uh, the 9th. And how so are you feeling about that? A bit nervous because it's major surgery. I haven't sort of had surgery before. The cost of treating someone like Pargat is typically about £50,000. But the hope is that by operating now, the risk of him developing more health problems in the future will be reduced. The kinds of people I see are the tip of the iceberg of obesity. These are people who've tried over the years to lose weight, but they've got bigger and bigger, and every time they develop the complication like diabetes, high blood pressure, or sleep apnea, or heart disease, we've given them more and more medication. So by the time they come to me, they've tried many times to lose weight and haven't succeeded. From a physical point of view, what, what um, do you want to be able to do in everyday life? Um, I'll get my life back to normal, really. Uh, physically, I'll be able to move around a bit better. It, because I'm a big lad, you know, it's still, it's, it's hard for someone like myself to bend and flex around, so uh, if I carry less weight, I'll be able to, you know, move around a bit better. To give credit where it's due, we have tried to tackle the obesity crisis. What on earth is that? Fish chicken I honestly, honestly have no idea what is in that. We've made school dinners more healthy. Food labelling is better, and no one can have missed the five-a-day message. But nothing seems to have made a lasting difference. In fact, in our tonight's survey, 75% said they were eating less than the recommended five portions of fruit and vegetables a day. Mum loves me. In 2009, the then Labour government launched a £275 million Change for Life campaign, encouraging us to eat better, move more and live longer. Now I eat me size meals, just the right amount for my tum. And the latest idea from the present government involves getting food companies to agree, voluntarily, to help improve public health. Critics say none of this is enough and we need to be much tougher. We haven't learnt the lessons of what was needed for smoking in order to eradicate it. Uh, we've got to repeat those lessons now for obesity. We've got to be severe because actually uh, obesity per se is an even worse problem than smoking. Uh, you can die from smoking, but you can die much easier from obesity. It is a real danger that we are not doing enough fast enough in order to eradicate the problem. According to our tonight's survey, almost half those questions said that if fast food cost more, they would eat less of it. Last October, Denmark became the first country to introduce a fat tax, making food with high saturated fat levels more expensive. Ready meals with high fat, salt and sugar levels are taxed in Hungary. And in France, they've introduced a sugar tax. There are no plans for similar legislation in the UK. If I thought there was a legislative tool that would turn this round, not literally overnight, but would have a massive impact on obesity and being overweight. We would do it, but there isn't that evidence yet. What's We're really going to have to find it though, aren't we? we We're well, we are big looking trouble, at it. Oh, we? we are in big trouble, and, and there is certainly no desire of, um, there's no lack of desire from this government or any other government around the world. This is most certainly not just a a British problem, this is a European problem. So we're not alone, which is good, in as much as there's a very big pool of people looking for a solution to this. But while that search goes on, it's the impact our modern diet is having on our children that is perhaps most worrying. 
According to health officials, a third of children are already overweight or obese by the time they leave primary school. OK, right. Who is ready to try some new fruit and vegetables? Let's see. Excellent, OK. Which makes programmes like this one all the more important. They are... Psychologists at Bangor University have developed a scheme called Food Dudes, aiming to make eating fruit and veg cool. We need you to help us! Every time you eat fruit and vegetables, you are making the life force stronger. And they say it's working. We've tried lecturing at kids, educating them. We've, tried, we've talked about legislation. In fact, none of these things are very effective for changing eating habits. You can't legislate for a child to like broccoli or a salad or whatever. You've got to help them to learn to like these foods. When we introduce the food dudes, what we see is a doubling or maybe trebling of consumption of fruit and vegetables and also a decrease in consumption of sweet and, and, and fatty foods, maybe 20 to 30 percent decrease. Now, in combination, that's very effective in terms of dealing with obesity. It's exactly what we need to achieve. They've already visited more than 300 schools across the UK, including this one in Wolverhampton. Come on then, let's eat, shall we? Since I started the food news, I've been eating more fruit and veg. It's really, really tasty. If you eat fruit and vegetables, it makes you really strong and makes your um, body awake. And your bones get bigger. And then you get stronger. Apples and grapes are pretty good, but not. But the grapes are sometimes all mushy in yeah, my lunchbox and I don't really like them, but I eat them anyway. They didn't used to want to eat fruit and vegetables. You might be lucky if they ate a banana or if they ate an apple, but now they're engaging with the school cook. They're asking what the vegetables are. They're asking to try it, and they're, 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 they're more, so much more open. When we introduced the programme, about 20% of the children were eating vegetables regularly at lunchtime. We've now got over 50%. It is absolutely fantastic. And they, they do it with a smile on their faces. Despite the success of schemes like this, obesity levels in the UK continue to cause concern with each new generation. Health experts are warning that we need to act now and act decisively. If we don't, the cost to society could be crippling. I think obesity has now to become the number one public health concern. And I think that unless we have genuinely concerted political commitment to put this at the very top of the agenda, we will continue to fail to address this problem in the way that we've been failing to address it for the last three decades. The Department of Health has told us that it will be ring-fencing up to £2.2 billion to help local authorities tackle public health problems like obesity. Now, if you'd like more information on tonight's programme, please visit our website at itv.com slash tonight. Until next week, though, good evening and thanks for watching. Coming up next week, public or private sector? Who really gets the best pay, the most generous perks and the biggest pension?